Yeah, okay. Nope, it, wait, what? We're on? Oh, right now? Hi! Today we have Princess Posey in the Tiny Treasure. Chapter 1. The Consequences Rule. Who knows what this word is, Miss Lee said. She pointed to the letters A-I-R-P-L-A-N-E on the word wall. Anyone? Miss Lee looked around for hands. Beep, 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 beep. Someone giggled. Posey put her hand over her mouth so she wouldn't giggle too. They all knew what the sound was. It was Jacob's new watch. It had a stretch band and an alarm. He had been showing it to kids all week. Jacob, Miss Lee frowned, didn't I ask you to leave that at home? Posey looked at Jacob. He sat at the table in front of her. I forgot to turn it off, he said. I know, said Miss Lee, but I warned you three times. We all remember the consequences rule, don't we? She looked around the room. Posey nodded solemnly. So did the rest of the class. The consequences rule was serious. Consequences were what happened when you didn't make a good decision. Miss Lee held out her hand. Jacob took off his watch. He gave it to Miss Lee. Yeah. You can take it home at the end of the day, she said. Miss Lee went to her desk and pulled out the bottom right-hand drawer. Posey's eyes opened wide. The consequences drawer. That was where Miss Lee put their treasures when they played with them during class. The rule was that you had to keep them in your backpack, or you could put them in your cubby. You could only play with them during recess. Posey loved to follow rules, but this one was hard. It was so exciting to share your treasures. One time, Posey brought her new lip gloss to school. It tasted like real pineapple. Posey let Nikki and Ava smooth it on their lips. She smoothed it on her lips, too. They licked it until it was gone, so they needed to put on more. Miss Lee had to tell Posey to put it away two times. Her lip gloss could have ended up in the consequences drawer, too. Thunk! Miss Lee closed the drawer. That was the sound of a treasure being locked away. Posey never wanted one of her treasures to end up in the consequences drawer. Chapter 2 Date Day The next day was Saturday. It was Posey's date day with Gramps. One Saturday a month, they did something special together. Just the two of them. What do you say, toots? Gramps called, down, called from downstairs. Are you ready? Not yet, Posey shouted. She twirled in front of her mirror. Her pink tutu spun out like an umbrella. She pulled on her t-shirt with the pink mouse. <clears throat> she clipped her kitty clips to her hair. Princess Posy was ready. She ran down the stairs. Bye, Mom, Posy called. Bye, Danny. She and Gramps drove to the hardware store. Gramps needed to buy parts to fix the kitchen sink. It went drip, drip, drip all day long. Posey loved the hardware store. There were so many things to look at. She and Gramps walked up and down the aisles. After Gramps found the parts he needed, they went to the paint section. It was Posey's favorite section.
Hundreds of colors were lined up in rows on little slips of paper. There was every color of the rainbow. Gramps always let Posy pick five slips. She used them to make art. Today, she picked five shades of pink. Gramps paid for his parts, then they went out to the truck. What do you say we get a hot dog and stop by the toy store on the way home? Gramps said. I'll buy a little something for you and Danny. Sure, said Posy. In the store, Posy saw a small red truck. Danny would love this, she said. He loves trucks. How about this for you, said Gramps. Your mom said you are learning to tell time. He held up a watch. It had a monkey on the face. The monkey's arms pointed to the numbers when the hands moved. The monkey's eyes moved too. Posy loved it. It would be so much fun to share. But all she could think of was that terrible thunk. No, she said. She shook her head fast. I don't want a watch. Okay, don't get excited. Gramps put the watch down. I'll tell you what, when you're ready for one, you let me know. Deal? Deal. Run and put Danny's truck on the counter, Gramps said. Then go find something for yourself. Posy went to the counter. That's when she saw the most wonderful thing. It spoke straight to her heart. Will you be my friend? It said. Chapter 3 Poinky and the Truck a tiny stuffed pig was hanging on a board next to the register. It had a squashed round nose and two bright blue eyes. One pointy ear stood straight up. The other ear flopped over. And it was so small. It looked so soft. Poisy longed to touch it. Go ahead. The lady behind the counter smiled at her. You can hold it. <clears throat> Poisy tried to pull the pig's squishy body off the board. It was stuck. The lady laughed. It has magnets in its feet, she said. You have to pull a little harder, like this. She pulled the pig off the board. Hold up your finger, she said. Poisy held up her index finger. The lady wrapped the pig's legs around it. Click, click. The feet snapped together. The pig held on tight. It felt as if it already loved her. And Poisy already loved it. Looks like you've made a friend, said Gramps. Can we buy it? Posy asked. Please? I think we're going to have to, Gramps said. It doesn't look like it's going to let go of you anytime soon. Thank you, Gramps. Posy brushed the pig across her cheek. It was as gentle as a puff of air. <laughs> She's a girl, she said. Her name is Poinky. Poinky, huh? said Gramps. P, because she's a pig, Posy explained, plus oink. We'll take them both, Gramps told the lady. Poinky and the truck, please. Chapter 4 Welcome home. Posy held Poinky up to the window on the ride home so she could see. This is our street, Poisy told her when they turned, turned on to Water Street, and this is our house. Gramps pulled into the driveway. 
and those are our swings, Poise said as they got out. And that's our sandbox, but don't worry, she patted Poinky's head. I won't let Danny bury you. Her mom and Danny were in the kitchen. Danny was in his high chair. He was eating pieces of cheese. Here, Danny, said Poise. She gave him the truck. Tuck, tuck, Danny cried. He ran it back and forth over his cheese. What a good choice, said her mom. What did you get? Poise held up her finger. Her name is Poinky, she said. Danny can't touch her. She's very delicate. Then it will be your job to keep her safe, her mom said. I hope you thanked Gramps. Of course she did, said Gramps. He put the parts on the counter. Now, let me at that noisy sink, he said. Posey wanted to show Poinky her other stuffed animals. They were lined up on her bed. This is Roger the giraffe, Posey said and Hoppy the frog, and Brownie the bear, and Kiki the tiger. There was a doll at the end of the row. It had a soft body and a hard head, but no hair. This is Wah, said Posey. She's a baby, so she cries a lot. Posey put Poinky next to Roger. One, two, three, four, five, she counted. Poinky made six. Who wants a book? said Posy. Her animals were so happy. Even Wa smiled. Posy got a book and sat on her bed. The animals snuggled around her. Posey knew some of the words. She made the others up. They all listened carefully until the very end. Chapter 5 Not Yet Posey told Nikki and Ava about Poinky in school on Monday. Bring her tomorrow, Nikki said. She sounds so cute. If you bring Poinky... I'll bring my stuffed kitty, said Ava. I'll bring a stuffed animal too, Nikki said. We can play a game. But what if Miss Lee takes them away, said Posey. We'll only play at recess, Ava promised. But Posey was worried. She was still worried the next morning. Poinky was so small and soft. What if Posy couldn't resist looking at her during class? She put Poinky back into the bed she had made from a little box. She covered her with the blanket she had made with cotton balls. You stay here, Posy said. I'll be home after school. I want to go to school, too, Poinky's face said. Not yet, said Posey. Ava and Nikki each brought in a toy. They played a game during recess. Posey had to sit and watch. She wished she could play, too. Bring Poinky tomorrow, Nikki and Ava begged. Maybe, Posey said. When Posey got home, she and Poinky had a serious talk. If I take you to school tomorrow, you have to hide, Posey said. You can only come out at recess, Poinky nodded. You have to be very quiet, said Posey. No peeking or squeaking. Poinky looked like she understood. The next morning, Posey let Poinky ride in the cup holder on the drive to school.
Are you sure this is a good idea, her mom said. I'll take good care of her, said Posey. I know the rule. Chapter 6 A bad day for treasures. Before class started, Posey let Ava and Nikki play with Poinky in the reading corner. First, she clicked Poinky's feet around Nikki's finger, then around Ava's. Oh, she's so sweet, they both said. Luca wanted to clip Poinky around his finger, too. No, Poesy told him. She's too delicate for boys. Time to get started, everyone, Miss Lee called. Maya, put your bracelet in your cubby. I will take it away if I see you playing with it again. Miss Lee sounded grouchy. Posey thought it was because of yesterday. Yesterday was a bad day for treasures. Miss Lee took away Jacob's matchbox car and Olivia's paper dolls and Will's superhero pencil. He kept tapping it on the table. Posey quickly put Poinky in her backpack so Miss Lee would see she was following the rule. All morning long, she wondered what Poinky was doing. She worried Poinky didn't have enough air. She wished Poinky could see how good Posey was at numbers. At recess, Posey and Ava and Nikki took their animals outside. They played jungle. It was so much fun. When they came in, Poinky wanted to see more. Posey showed her the word wall. And the art table. Poinky loved the crayons. Posey could tell she wanted to draw. Ava, thank you for sitting down so quickly, Miss Lee said. Posey turned around. Everyone was sitting down. Posey, put that away, said Miss Lee. You should have done that while when you came in. Miss Lee was frowning at her. Posey was so embarrassed. She couldn't go to her cubby now. Everyone would stare at her. She stuffed Poinky in her pocket and sat down. She would be as quiet as a mouse for the rest of the day. She would raise her hand when there was a question. Miss Lee would thank Posey for being good, too. Chapter 7 Thunk! Oh, no! Posey worked hard at her writing to make Miss Lee happy. She made her letters very neat. Boys and girls, Miss Lee called, finish what you are doing. It's time to go to the media center. Posey loved the media center. When she returned one book, she got to take out another one. She put down her pencil and jumped up. Poinky fell out of her pocket. She landed on the floor. Oh no, her beautiful pink skin will get dirty. Posey picked her up. Posey! Miss Lee's voice was like a sharp stick. Posey put her hand behind her back. I thought I told you to put that away, Miss Lee said. Give it to me. You can have it back on Friday. Miss Lee held out her hand. Posey stared at it. Friday? But it was an accident. She didn't mean to, and she only got one warning. The words tumbled around inside Posey's head. She couldn't say them. She was frozen. Ha ha, Luca whispered. You be quiet, said Posey. I'm waiting, Miss Lee said. You're holding up the rest of the class. Posey made herself put Poinky into Miss Lee's hand. Then she went to the back of the line. Ava and Nikki were looking at her. Posey didn't look back. 
She didn't want anyone to see her eyes. She didn't watch Miss Lee walk to her desk, but she did hear the thunk. Coinky was shut inside the consequences drawer. A lot going on there. In the dark, by herself, until Friday. And it was all Posey's fault. Chapter 8. No buts in consequences. Posey didn't want to tell her mom. She would say Posey should have remembered the consequences rule. Posey had remembered. It was an accident. You stay outside with Danny while I get your snacks, her mom said when they got home. We can have a snack picnic. Posey sat on the edge of the sandbox. Danny pushed his red truck over the sand. When he came to Posey's foot, he drove over it. No, Danny, she said, don't do that. Danny laughed. He drove the truck over her foot again. Stop that, said Posey. Danny thought it was a game. It made Posey mad. She snatched the truck from his hand and stood up. Danny let out a roar. I warned you, said Posey. Danny grabbed her knees. He tried to pull himself up to get his truck. Posey held it over her head. Don't tease him like that, said her mom. She put a tray with snacks on the grass. Give it back to him. He got sand on my shoe, Posey said. I will give it back on Friday. Danny's only a baby, her mom said. He doesn't understand what Friday is. So, why doesn't he have to learn about consequences, too? Uh-oh. Her mom raised her eyebrows. What happened? The story flooded out. When Posey was finished, her mom said, It doesn't do any good to get mad. You didn't follow the rule. That's what consequences are all about. But, sorry, no buts. Her mom sure didn't sound sorry. Friday will be here before you know it. Posey went up to her room. She put on her pink tutu and her magic veil to make herself feel better. Being Princess Posey always made her feel better. She looked in the mirror. Princess Posey looked sad. It's not fair, Posey said. She stomped her foot. Princess Posey still looked sad. Well, it isn't. Posey's shoulders slumped. It was no good. Poinky was alone in that drawer. Posey knew she was scared. It was up to Posey to do something. Chapter 9 Maybe she won't be so afraid. Posey walked slowly down the blue hall. What if Miss Lee had on her grouchy face again today? Posey would forget the right words. She made her stiff legs walk up to the desk. Miss Lee, she said. Good morning, Posey. Miss Lee smiled. You look serious today. Miss Lee had on her happy face. Miss Lee, you put Poinky in the consequences drawer, Posey said. She's afraid of the dark. Poinky? Miss Lee looked puzzled. Oh, your little animal. She fell out of my pocket said Posey. It was an accident. It's always an accident, Miss Lee said in her understanding voice. But you only gave me one warning, Posey said. You're supposed to give three. 
That's true, Miss Lee said. I am. You said Poinky has to be there till Friday, but Poinky's only a baby. Posey's mouth got trembly. She doesn't know what Friday is. She put the small box on Miss Lee's desk. If you put her in here, she might not be so afraid, Posey said. Miss Lee looked at Poinky's bed, then back at Posey. I guess consequences sometimes hurt other people, don't they? said Miss Lee. Posey nodded. Miss Lee sighed. Yesterday was a bad day for me, she said. Me too, said Posey. Miss Lee smiled. I had a terrible headache all day, she said, and I was annoyed because so many of you have been playing with your toys. Posey didn't say anything, but that's no excuse. Miss Lee pulled out her bottom right-hand drawer. I broke my own rule. I should have given you three warnings. Posey couldn't believe her eyes. Miss Lee took Poinky out of the drawer and put her in the little bed. Poinky was free. Poinky is very lucky to have someone like you, Miss Lee said. She held out the bed. Put her where she'll be safe until the end of the day. Okay, thank you, Miss Lee, Posey said. She gripped Poinky in the bed tight in her hand. <clears throat> she went to her cubby and pushed Poinky to the very far back. She would never bring her to school again. She would never, ever, ever let another treasure end up in the consequences drawer. Chapter 10. Maybe soon. That night, Gramps took Posey and her mom and Danny out for dinner. Posey had a hamburger and chocolate milk. It felt like a celebration. There was a clock on the wall. The long head pointed straight up, the short hand pointed straight down. Posey stared at it. She tried hard to remember. It's six o'clock, she said. That's right, said her mom. Good job. I'm not so good at the in-between numbers, Posey said. Keep practicing. You will learn. Her mom wiped spaghetti sauce off Danny's face. I offered to buy her a watch on our last date, Gramp said. Do a lot of children in your class have watches? Her mom asked. Not too many, Posey said. Think you're ready for one yet? said Gramps. Posey thought about their wonderful monkey watch. It would be so much fun to show Nikki and Ava. They would laugh so hard when the monkey's arms and eyes moved. Everyone else would want to see it too. It would be very hard not to play with such an exciting watch in class. Posey made up her mind. I think maybe I will be ready when I'm seven, she said. You're the boss, said Gramps. When you want it, you let me know. Deal? Deal, said Posey. The end. That was a great book. I think I like Posey. I hope you enjoyed that book as much as I did. God bless.